I'm excited you're joining me, Brianna K, for this holiday rug. It has a really fun method where we take one strand of worsted weight yarn and we turn it into three. It's super fun, super good to know, so let's get started. We're going to take this one strand and we're going to place it in front of us and we're going to first start from the right, going to the left, then back to the right and to the left again. This creates the letter S. Our next step is to pinch this S together by just pulling down the center and then creating three strands that are bunched together. This is our yarn. This is our bulky weight yarn and we're going to treat it as such by starting with a slip knot so that we can chain our starting stitches. Take your hook and insert it into the slip knot making sure to catch all three of those strands and treat them as one. Then we will leave our tail end down here that's like any other tail. And then we have our working yarn off to the left here. We will start by chaining. As you will notice, I am going to quickly run out of that bulky yarn. And this is what's really fun about this step. It's really easy to keep going and create more bulky yarn. You take that loop and you reach through that loop and you grab your working strand. Now you're going to pull that strand through and to your left. Notice how this brings three strands together again. I absolutely love this method because you don't have you know three balls of yarn hanging out in front of you getting tangled. There's less room for tangling going on here and we're only working from one ball of yarn. Now we will simply continue on with our chains. You'll notice that there is that little knot loop there. It really doesn't make a difference. We pretend like it's not there and we continue on going. Chain as many as your pattern calls for. And then when you're ready, you will start single crocheting in the second chain from your hook and across. This is how we will complete our first row. Obviously yours will be a bit bigger than mine, but I'm just doing this to show you. And whenever you start to run out of that bulky yarn, you will simply create a little bit more by grabbing through that loop and pulling your yarn. You can create more or less as is comfortable for you. After a while, I start to create quite a bit of that bulky strand to my left hand side and work from it. The next thing I wanna show you is how to do that split stitch with this bulky yarn. You're still gonna treat it as one strand and you're gonna enter your hook in between those two vertical strands into like the center of that stitch, making sure you're underneath that bottom back bar. You're going to pull up and you're going to pull up more than normal. You want this to be nice and loose. You don't want it to be tight, otherwise you can't get into the stitch on the next row. We'll yarn over and pull through to complete that stitch and then repeat again, pulling up and then yarning over and pulling through the two strands on the hook. The most important thing when doing this stitch is to make sure that your tension stays loose. I cannot express that enough. If it's too tight, this will be a frustrating project, so be sure to pull up before you're yarning over and pulling through those two final loops on your hook. This is a really fun stitch, so just make sure to keep your tension loose and you'll really enjoy it. Now that we're ready to get started on our next row, I want to show you what to do if you're starting with your two balls of yarn and you don't have any bulky yarn to work from. You'll use the same method we did before with our first color, which is gray, on this row and creating an S. You will pull that S together so to create that bulky yarn, but we're not doing any slip knots this time. So once you pull these strands together, your yarn is ready to go. This is a bulky weight yarn. You'll leave the right side of your strands a few inches over so that you have enough room for fringe. Then you'll pull your bulky yarn through, yarn over and pull through again. This is your chain one. So we just created a chain one on the starting side of our row. We left some for fringe and now we already need to create some more bulky yarn. So we'll go ahead and do that by pulling that strand through that loop. Once again, I like to create quite a bit at once. 
That way I don't run out as quickly and I'm not constantly creating more bulky yarn. On my couch I'll create quite a bit and just set it in a pile so it doesn't get tangled or even wrap it back around that yarn. Now we'll continue with our very first split stitch in the row. So our chain one just kind of sits there and now we're ready to enter our first split stitch. But since we're changing color so quickly, we're going to leave it without pulling through those two loops on our hook and we're going to go to our next color which is red. We'll do the same thing with the red yarn where we create the S to create that bulky yarn. Now we will take this strand, leaving some room for fringe, and we will pull it through those two remaining loops on our hook. So be sure to leave room for fringe on the right hand side. Take the red working yarn, treating it as one strand of bulky yarn, even though they're three strands together, and we're going to pull it through the two loops on our hook. And now we are ready to leave the fringe on the right side and continue working on with our split stitches. So I'm going to work into the next one, yarn over and pull through, and I already need more bulky yarn with the red, of course. So we're going to go ahead and pull through that left loop to create more of that bulky yarn. creating quite a bit here so I don't have to deal with it again anytime soon. I'm going to leave that sitting to my left and then I will continue on with the working yarn. Pulling up each time to make sure that my tension is nice and loose. Now I'm going to catch this gray yarn here. Whenever I work more than four stitches, which I'm working five in a row here, in the middle I will catch that yarn on the back so they don't have long strands on the back that cause issues for me later with tension or anything. I keep, it keeps it flowing really nice on the back. So I didn't actually work the gray, I simply left it on the back and caught it with my red yarn so that there wasn't a lot of messy loops going on in the back that were really long. And now I'm going to change back to the gray yarn and then once again back to the red yarn and it will just be this all the way across as we do our color work, treating the three strands as one bulky yarn, keeping our tension loose for that split stitch. And anytime we do a color change, we are going to pull our new color through that last stitch of the loops on our hook. It creates a nice color change. I'm going to speed this up a little for a second so you can see what it would look like if we were super crocheters and we could actually do a row this quick, but I'm just continuing to use those techniques all the way across. Creating more bulky yarn when needed and keeping my tension loose. As we get to the end of this row, I want to show you I have some little piles here of my bulky yarn that's been created and I'm obviously going to have some left over, but that's a great thing actually and I'll show you why when we start our next row. But we're going to continue this row by continuing our slip stitches until the end and I want you to see what it looks like on each side of this rug. So I need to finish by single single split stitching these red and I'm still going to be catching my gray when I need to so I don't have those big loops sitting along the back. And now into this very last split stitch you kind of have to pull your fringe a little bit so those loose ends are still part of our stitch and you want to make sure you're entering in the right spot here. It is still a split stitch, but those end ones act a little bit funny until they are pulled tight. So there's my last stitch on the left hand side, and now I am ready to create the fringe from the red and the gray yarn on the left side of my work. To do this, we'll take these awesome scissors. I'll link to these. I believe I got them on Amazon, and I'm going to cut my threads on the left hand side and then I'm going to leave this bulky yarn for later. It can just sit there. To finish this row I will simply pull through my last stitch and that's it. With these extra strands I tie them as I go using either six 
to 10 strands at a time, whatever you like for your knot. And I simply loop through and secure them on the end. No ends to weave in here, which is what I love about a rug with a fringe on the sides. You can see I've done it down below. I've tied some knots. And if I have a lot of space in between them, I'll go back later and fill in with some more fringe. So now that we're done with our row completely, I wanna show you to start the next row, we don't need to create bulk of yarn, we already have it. So we will continue to work with this yarn just like we did before. There's no need to undo it and create the S, we're already there. I love that we can just continue to work on and create the fringe on the right hand side, connect our yarn and keep on going. I hope you've enjoyed this project as much as I have and continue to follow along with more home decor projects in the future.